Okay, Zskites, so let's go over how to read some of the sources for the Avodah Zarah Shir. Um, just for clarity, whenever I'm referring to Rambam, Maimonides, I'm going to say Maimonides. And when I'm referring to the Ramban, Nachmanides, I'm actually going to say Ramban. So I'll be talking about Maimonides and the Ramban during this recording. This way, the, hopefully, there'll be a little bit less confusion. As a quick recap, um, Maimonides had mentioned that Avodazar was all fake, all this astrology, none of it worked, it was all just a big joke. And explaining why um, it's mentioned so much in the Torah, he basically said, A, you know, it was popular, people were doing this a lot, so it had to be mentioned in the Torah a lot. And in addition, he said it was popular because the idol worship and all this other stuff was always coupled with a lot of illicit, immoral activity, which people were always attracted to. Um, Nachmanides the Ramban in fact said, and most of these sources really deal with that opinion, that idol worship and black magic, astrology, sorcery, it all did some type of an effect that a person wanted. Um, among his proofs was against the Rambam, excuse me, against Maimonides, why he disagreed with him. As he said, you know, the Torah mentions all day so, so often you shouldn't be worshipping these things, but if it was all just a big joke, why does the Torah have to constantly warn against it? He also said that the penalty for Avodah Zarah is, 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 is the strictest death penalty we have. Again, if it's all foolishness, why such a strict penalty? Um, and in addition, he has many sources that seem to give it some type of credence. A um, bunch of them will be here. So we just started off with Vayomer Paro, Mi Hashem Asher Eshma Bekolo. Paro said, Who is Hashem that I should listen to his voice? This was the starting point for this whole reason we did this lesson. Is Paro tells Moshe, I don't believe in your God. I think it's all made up so you could get out of working. L'shalach es Yisrael. Who is this God that, I God that I should listen to his voice to send out the Jewish people? Lo yadati et Hashem. I never knew this God. V'gam es Yisrael lo ashalayach. I will not send the Jewish people. Then here were some of the sources we pointed out. Anochi Hashem. This is Yasser Sadibros. Anochi Hashem lo kecha. I am Hashem your God. Asher otzeisizcha. Me Eretz Mitzrayim. Who took you out of the land of Egypt. Me Beis Avodim. From the house of Servitude, lo yelacha alo him acherim al panai. You will not have other gods, acherim, other gods on my in in front of me, before me again. Even this was one of the proofs for the Ramban of the Torah seems to give it uh, the name Elohim, which is a kind of a godlike name. And Maimonides would disagree. He'd say the Torah gave it that name because people treat them like gods. Um, you shouldn't go after other gods. From the gods of the nations, that are surrounding you. Because a jealous God, God Kana is jealous. Hashem, your God, amongst you. Pen lest yechere af Hashem, the anger of Hashem will be flared out. Yechere means flared up, af, the anger of Hashem, Elokecha, your God. Becha, bach upon you, vehishmidcha, and he will destroy you, me'al peneha adama, from the face of the earth. And then here's another pasa, kikal eloke ha'amim, sorry, kikal elohe ha'amim, elilim, whenever you use this word, when it's talking about fake things, you can use it with a hey. Because all the gods of the nations, Elilim, are false, the Hashem Shamayim Asa, but Hashem made the heavens. So in class we discuss these psukim and how they fit into our discussion. Then source 3, you don't have to know how to translate. But source 3 was very important to our studying that Rabbi Akiva, so I'll read parts of it. You don't, I'm not going to ask you to translate. Rabbi Akiva Havile Brata, Rabbi Akiva had a daughter, Amarle Kaldoi, a certain Chataliden, which is a type of, he was a type of sorcerer said to him, Hahu Yoma, on the day the Ailele Beginana, that your daughter goes up to the wedding um, to her wedding canopy, trick la chavia of Mesa. A uh, serpent will bite her and die, and she will die. And Hava de Iga Milsatuva and Rabbi Akiva was very worried about hearing this, which we said was significant. Um, why didn't he just dismiss the guy and said it's all fake? Anyway the story goes on about how she ended up um, she ended up uh, helping, uh, oh, let's read it. So that day of her wedding day, she took out uh, a pin, this is after a wedding, you know, she had pins in her hair and she stuck it in the wall. So it's Rame and it happened, it's and it pierced the eye of a serpent that was hiding in her wall. 
Litzafra in the morning, Kikashaklala, when she grabbed the pin, Hava Kasrich, she was pulling it out, Vaati Chavya Basra, and the dead serpent came came out after it. Yikes, Amrla Avuha. So when her father saw her, Rabbi Akiva saw her later that day, Maya Vadit, he says to her, What did you do? Meaning he understood something happened that she saved her life. So Amrla, she said to him, Bipanya. Last night at my wedding, Asa Anya, a poor person, came to the wedding, Kara Abava, and he was calling at the gate of the wedding. But everybody was so busy dancing, no one paid any attention to him. No one heard him. So Ka'imna, so I got up. And I took the plate of food that was given to me, and I gave it to him. So this created a merit for her. So Amr Allah, Rabbi, and, and that must be the the reason why she ended up getting saved from this um, this uh, kind of decree against her. So Amr Allah, Rabbi Kiva said to her, "Mitzvah avadat." Ah, oh, that's what happened. You did a mitzvah. So he understood that even though the sorcerer saw something in the stars about her, the spiritual actions that we do completely may have us live on a different level, and we are not bound by the things that appear appear in the stars. We can change them. Nafak Rabbi Akiva Vidarash. Rabbi Akiva went out to the base Medrash and he expl- and he uh, taught Vitzadaka Tatsil Mimaves, this Pasuk, that says Tzaka will save you from death. So he says, Velome Misa Mishuna, that doesn't mean that it'll save you from a uh, from a difficult, strange death, and you'll have like a peaceful death, but El Elami Misa Atzma, it actually saves you from death completely. Next source with Avram Avinu. So he says, Amar Lefanov, Avram Vina said to Hashem, Ribona Shal Ola, Master of the World, Nistakalti B'itz Tagnina Chali. I looked into my stars, my astrological signs, Ve'eni Ro'e Laholid Ben, and I am not worthy to give birth to a child. I see in my astrology, Avram said to Hashem, I see that I'm not going to have any children. So Amar Le, so Hashem said to Avram, Tzei M'itz Tagnina Shalcha, leave your astrology, uh, leave your um, heavenly um, stars and signs. She'ain mazal Yisrael, because there is no mazal means like astrological signs to the Jewish people. What we're learning here in this idea is that although there is some type of a concept, and this fits in very well with the Ramban, Nachmanides, although there is some, there used to be some type of a science where one could read stars and see something about their future, this does not apply to the Jewish people. In Mazal Yisrael, there is no astrological signs to the Jewish people, and this is this explanation. This Gemara in Shabbos is the pasuk in Bereshis, that when Avram said to Hashem in pasuk Gimel, I, "I'm never gonna, I don't have a child," so the pasuk says, "Vayotze Oto Hachutza." Hashem took him outside, Vayomer, and said, "Habetna Hashemayma, look up in the heavens, Usparz Kochavim, and count the." the stars, if you could even count them, which of course you can't. And that this will be the number of children that you have. So is normally understood as Hashem said to Abraham, step outside your tent, look at the stars. But Rashi says means he showed him you saw in the astrological signs you're not going to have a child. Hashem took him outside. Hashem literally lifted him above the stars. Whereas this means physically he took him above the stars. It means spiritually it means you are above the stars. You're not trapped into the fate that you see in stars because Ein Mazal Yisrael, the Jewish people do not work by the stars. Um, then we use, we read this Pasuk, Tamim Tiyem Hashem Al Kecha, pure, you should be with Hashem, your God, you should be pure, meaning you shouldn't be going after astrology or sorcerers, you want to know the future, you want to know what's going to happen with you, you should be talking to Hashem directly. Now, over here, we have the Rambam, how did Avodah Zara ever start? So he says that Omru, people originally said, Kim elu. since Hashem himself this is people, ancient people, um, those first generations after Adam and Eve. Since God created these stars, the Gilgalim, and uh, also there's also types of uh, types of waves and things. Lahan Heges Haolam, God created all sorts of things to run the world through them. The Natnam Bimarom, and He put them up in the in the heavens. The Chalak Lahem Kavod, and He gave them honor. The Haim. 
shamashim, and they were our servants, the sun, the stars, the moon, the planets. These are all servants, hamishamshin lefanav, that serve before Hashem. And so therefore, re'uyin heim, they are fitting l'shabcham, to praise them also, v'lefa'aram, and also to praise them, v'lachlok lahem kavod, and to give them honor also. So people started off, the Rambam says, Maimonides says, worshipping the started off just praising the sun, the moon, the stars, because these things essentially are set up by Hashem, and Hashem uses them to affect things in this world. So they weren't worshipping them as gods, but they were worshipping them as, uh, they weren't worshipping them at all, they were just praising them together with Hashem. But then the Rambam says what ended up happening, let me get back to the right page here, so the Rambam says, but what ended up happening was the following. Hashem said, what, but the Rambam says, Maimonides says, but what ended up happening was, Bekeva and Sha'archu Hayamim, when the days got long, that means years went by when they were praying to Hashem and also praising the stars. However, Nishtaka Hashem, Hanechba, they ended up forgetting about the honored name. That means they forgot about Hashem, the Hanora, the awesome God, Mipi Kol Hayakum, from all Yakum, people standing on this earth. That their kids saw their parents, you know, praying to Hashem and praying to the moon, or it looked like it was they're praying to the moon, to the sun. So the, eventually, the later generations forgot about Hashem, and they were only focusing on the planets and stuff. Umidatam, um, and from their knowledge of Elohi Kiruhu, and they didn't recognize, they didn't see Hashem, they just saw the moon and stuff. Venimtu Kol Ama Aretz, and it turns out that all of the people of the land um, ended up uh, worshiping like these other things. Um, and then so that we'll just read till there. Um, but basically, the Rambam says that it started off with good intentions, but it became misunderstood, and ultimately, that's how people started thinking that these things were gods themselves. Um, we c explained in class that Hine Hashem Nitzav Alav, that uh, Hashem is described as standing over Abraham, and then we also contrast Paro standing over the. Nile, he ne omed al hayor. So we have God standing over Abraham and Paro standing over his God, the Yeor. So we see with the Jewish people, God is above us, but with the uh, over the Avodah Zarah, the idol worshippers, they are above their gods. We explained in class what that meant is that you reason according to Nachmanides, the Ramban, you served an Avodah Zarah was because it did something for you. So you weren't serving the thing, you were basically using it, you wanted a certain result, you wanted to get the job, you wanted to get a position, so you used to go to the Avodah Zarah, you used to do what it, what it needed to do, So, but you weren't worshipping that, that idol, you didn't care about it, you only cared about yourself. And that's the difference between worshipping Hashem and worshipping idols. Worshipping Hashem means you give your whole self over to something greater, to Hashem, and whatever Hashem wants, we serve. But with the idols, you stand over that God, because really, it's really your own self-worship, um, which uh, explains how, you know, things ended up becoming human worship as well, and turning people into gods as well, because the whole thing really started off with man's worshipping himself, really. He never really cared about that idol to begin with. Then we concluded over here with Amar Levi, Levi said, this is a Gemara in Yushami, Kol HaMenachesh, anybody who, this is some type of a sorcery, you see the word Nachash in there, which means snakes, you know, from Voldemort or whatever, snakes were always a big part of that whole culture. Kol HaMenachesh, anybody who does source, goes to an astrologer, does sorcery, Sofo Lavo Alav, in the end the thing will come to him, Lavo Alav, meaning the punishment for going to an astrologer or a sorcerer is the thing he tells you you are trapped into. In fact, your fate becomes trapped to that thing. As opposed to, like Rabbi Akiva's daughter, like Avram Avinu, somebody who worships Hashem, he can change everything about his life, about his destiny. But this is the punishment there, you get trapped into it. And the, f and the final things that we pointed out in this shir, is Hashem says many times, Im telchu imi keri, Hashem says, if you treat me haphazardly, if you look at the events in your life as happenstance, they just happened, there wasn't a God behind it. So, then, I'm also going to work with, I'm going to act that way with you. I'm going to let you be, um, I'm going to let you be a victim to just the happenstances of the world. If you want to live a life that doesn't have God infused in it, then actually that's what is what you're in fact going to get. Similar to this idea, if you're going to those other sources, it's not that they won't work, 
They will work, but you'll lose your connection to God and you'll be living on a much lower level.